What's up, Scrollers? It's Nerf here, and today we're going to play some Judgment. Um, I did get the number one weekly winner this week. It was quite a fight at the top of the ladder between myself, Donkey74, and PewQ, and now NickDean16 is in the mix. So, um, definitely a lot of top players over the um, history of Scrolls coming back right now towards the top of the ladder. And today we're going to play some normal Judgment, no challenge videos like ADT Judgment Challenge, just a simple judgment video um i think i'm only going to record the first game of it if you didn't notice i kind of have two types of judgment videos sometimes i show the whole run and i speed it up but i get a post commentary which i don't think is as good um because the post commentary is just not as in depth and it's all sped up but uh when i just when i just show the first match then when i just show the first match i can do an in-depth live commentary so let's draft this deck starting off not really any nice big creatures i see that i want to draft um there's vengeful vetter here it's a god hand which would really bring a, a deep growth deck together i'll take the vengeful vetter here seeing as it's the only creature you want to take creatures early in the game and there's another vengeful letter, but there's a witch doctor so that's definitely looking the best right now i will take the god hand here just because it has so much potential if i can go mono growth so i will take that over the squire and then here i'm going to take the ripper again a creature and it combos very well with this witch doctor um and even though i already have a ventral and got it i will take the witch doctor i mean uhu uh canetta duster is it not a bad thing to go with either or ventral vetter sister the fox but i think that witch doctor has the biggest impact on judgment games so i will take the witch doctor and there's another ripper here which is another another human which can make sense um this road just has a couple, bunch of structures not really a big thing and then there's a jarl Erhold. Okay, so now growth is looking the best again. I think we're going to be either growth or decay looking at what we have. I'm going to take this uh, bear paw for that reason in growth. Then I'm going to take this pillar. Right, then we have wetland ranger and then a rot eater. So both of those work in growth or decay as well. So right now both factions, I can go with it. Okay, two Jarl Urhalds. It's not even that good because Jarl Urhalds is unique. Um, and in a 30 scroll deck... Having two of the same unique creature <laughs> isn't that great. Um, what do I like more? Ripper, Ripper, uh, Witch Doctor. I don't care about this pillar fatigue. Ripper, Ripper, Witch Doctor, Rot Eater, or Vengeful Vetter, Erhold, Erhold Ranger. It's gonna get. It's gonna be harder to get to eight resources. That's the thing. But growth tends to do better than decay in judgment. Um, there's also a blight bear down here. Uh, an anima condo here. I didn't, I didn't mention that. It's amazing for decay. Screw it. I want the champion. We're taking the Urhald. Um, it already looks like I may have made the bad decision because this is a trison here. Um, I will take, I, I took the Urhald, I'm going to push for growth with that god hand too. Wetland Ranger, the other Urhald, um, who knows, I could still go to Kale, I'll take the Trisman. Um, trying to go growth, I'll take the Sister of the Fox, uh, I guess I could still go to Kale, so I'll take the Festering Freak, um, Plating, sure, Champion Ring, I'm still trying to take Decay and Growth Scrolls here. Uh, like Earthborn Keeper, Boghound. <laughs> then there's a new Flash Team for this. Wow. Oh, wait, is that all the champions? A K's on this roll also. I don't think I see, I've seen a Thea yet. <laughs> wow, all the champions in this Judgment Draft. Uh, I'll take the Owl here. I'm starting to think I should have gone to K. Um, yeah, because there's <laughs> new Rue down here also. Would have been easier to get to the new movies. I have a witch doctor also. I don't have it uh, like creatures to get to the Urhalds. Well, whoops! I may have made a bad decision there. Yeah, and look, every every turn there's like all these nice decay scrolls. Ugh! I feel like I made such a mistake there. I mean, it would have been it wouldn't have been that bad to take. I went Urhald Ranger Urhald. Um, when I could have had conduit. Animal Conduit, um, like, I think, uh, Rot Eater, and a, another Decay thing. 
So that that would have made it decay deck amazing. I could still go decay though, so I'm considering taking the Nuru. I'm going to. Wildling doesn't have that much potential. I'll take the Viscera Sage. Uh, Slayer Vestige. Languid is great in this right. I think we're still going to be in Decay, it looks like. Decay looks like the best bet. I wish I was able to. I wish I could go back in time and get the Blight Bear and stuff that I missed. And other Rot Eater. Void Gate. Yeah, Decay definitely looks like it's going to be the thing. I don't know. I'll still, I'll still take some growth stuff. Wildling, maybe. Eh, take the Baldine Taint. Corpus Collector. Yeah. I should I should have just gone with Decay the whole way. Um I don't know. I might splash growth. Uh got a lot of good scrolls here for kind of all the factions. I'm just taking the decay stuff as I see it now. Oh um, there's a blight bear. Again, I wish I could have another one then. Alright, there's a Necrogeddon, that's awesome. Uh Necrogeddon and finish off with a Squire. Do we have enough to make a Mono Decay deck? Not quite. We would have had enough scrolls to make a Mono Decay deck. A fortune creature is not a lot. Uh, I don't know about this deck. It feels interesting. It definitely feels a bit interesting. Um, not the best. A lot of two drops. A couple three drops. A couple four drops. No five drops. Six drop. No seven drop. And a new. I have a Watcher getting it in the deck. Which could definitely work. Definitely, if I didn't have that stray into growth, I would have had a much better deck here. Um, what do I want to put in? I guess I could splash in a single binding root. That's what I'll do. One binding root. Who knows? It could come in handy. So I'll call this. Um, oh, whatever. Cordy. So that is today's judgment deck. Let's head into a match. Alright, a match has been found. And let's see who it is against. Ipoc underscore Cruden. I don't think I've ever seen him. I've ever seen him before. And looking at my starting hand, this is pretty good. Because I have a turn one play, turn two play, hopefully a top deck of play I could play in turn three. And I have four drops to play, so I think I will keep this hand. I actually mulligan, I think, more than I should. A lot of times I mulligan and end up with a worse hand than I started with. I'm going to try to stop doing that. Like, I'm talking in, like, constructed and ranked. It happens to me, too. And I guess the obvious sacrifice early on is the Omen of Damnation, which is a pretty bad scroll. Okay, he has no play in turn one, so I see his growth. Um, I do have a turn, play the, turn three play, the Void Gate. Which is also a pretty, pretty bad scroll because sometimes you're almost giving up an idol. But it is almost like an undestroyable wall unless the opponent has burns and stuff. Like magic damage to get rid of it. Uh, he's growth. I'm a little afraid of Ragged Wolf right now. That would suck. It actually is kind of important I top deck a turn 3 play because now I can make you move it's anywhere in the world I want. If you have a my Shandler in turn one, and then a turn two play and a turn three, uh, all units split down, you can make the My Shandler attack any row. Um, but by doing so, it would mean the Void Gate would be in a not particularly uh, beneficial position for me. So that would kind of suck. I do want to get rid of this rat though, so hopefully I top deck a creature. So I can put it in this position to make the Mario Chandler attack that tile. Okay, he just plays like that. Interesting, he didn't want to protect his... Alright. Well, I'm actually going to Languid. I'm going to Languid this Mangy Rat. I don't want to play the Void Gate in like the back row, so I'm just going to Languid this Mangy Rat. Regenitor, I think, is really nice. I'm actually going to play that right away. This thing having three health is just... Look how much power, more powerful it looks like right now. And I will I'll put it right here for fifty percent chance of hitting this ripper. Actually no, I'll go like this. So that there's a sixty-seven percent chance I kill something. 
Okay, and now this guy is set to kill this unless he has some kind of protection, which he should, because I'm going to draw a scroll if my Viscera Stage can kill it. Viscera Stage has always been an underrated scroll, in my opinion. Um, it can really have nice value for a 2-drop, but I guess it's really not underrated because the, uh, just a 2-2-2 two, two, two for 2, um, if you compare it to other scrolls, it's just really bad. You can just compare it to decay, to Decay's other two drops, like Ilmire Tribes and with his massive four health. Uh, Bakan immediately has three health and even four attack when there's uh, an idol destroyed. So yeah, he just kind of outclassed. Alright, and I'm going to get a scroll from this, so that's really nice. I'll get rid of the early Necrogeddon and display a Corpus Collector. And move you back a little bit. So this is a very, very, very nice start for me. I'm actually going to be able to sacrifice for resources next turn and play a Ripper and the Black Bear. It's funny, the Christmas scrolls are still in the game. Ripper still has her hoodie, her Santa hood. And there's the Earthborn Keeper. I am going to do what I just said and play two scrolls. And I'm going to be able to just move this Mire Shambler. I don't know, I mean, there wasn't really much of a point in playing that unless you think I didn't know what to do. Because I could just simply move this creature here, move this creature here, and get a 100% chance to kill that keeper. I'm actually going to position slightly differently, though. Um, just because I want to threaten the whole board with attacking units next turn. Okay. And what's he doing? What's he doing? What's he doing? So I have nice, nice chunky creatures on the board right now. Once I get the witch doctor, do witch doctor down, it's really gonna be game over. I don't even need the Nuru Flesh Seamstress. I did not do any idle damage yet, so I've been really using my damage efficiently on his creatures. He's kind of been playing them in places I can kill. All right, so he plays that up there. I likely won't be able to like, destroy that because I don't really have any attack buffs in this deck. I don't think, at least I don't remember. If I stop like a Witch Doctor right now, I'm probably not going to sacrifice. I'll just play the Witch Doctor next turn. He plays the Alon Vital. He probably shouldn't have done that. I'll get rid of the Wicked Being. Four scrolls, and I get a Slayer Vestige. Um, I guess I'll deal some damage to him. Why not? And hit the middle idol for four. And just position and threaten his guy. I'm not going to let that guy survive. It's very tempting to just take out one countdown unit as soon as they enter the board. Um, they can get enchanted and really, really wreck some havoc. I do have some undead in this deck, so Sanctuary of the Lost could come in handy against like an energy deck that I've seen is like playing sparks on me and stuff like that. But most of the time it's just going to be Sacrifice fodder. Bear paw and a vengeful vetter in front. Well, okay. I'll get rid of the sanctuary, the lost, and I'm not able to kill this guy, unfortunately. I'll be able to bring him down to two health. I mean, he's going to heal one, so he's going to go back to two. And unfortunately, I think I'm actually going to lose this viscera sage. I actually don't want to lose. Hmm. Nah, I'll put you in the front. I don't really mind. Here, let's go like this. How do I want to do this? Um. I'm only gonna play the bog hound and ripper. I think this turn. <sighs> Probably not gonna play a structure that I don't know I need. So I'll, I'll move around my guys uh, kind of effectively. And he's down. In some, health, in some health, and I get some idle damage in. So he is going to be able to either kill my Visitor Sage or my Bog Hound. One or the other. All he would have to do is play one creature to have enough attack to kill this bog hound. 
Okay. And he doesn't have play at all. So now I'm going to just get rid of the rattle him because I don't really care about drawing my linger sun. There's my powerful creatures right in the middle of the deck cycle or actually more close to the two thirds. I am going to just kill this keeper right now with the corpus collector and I'll keep a space open next to the corpus collector because I want to draw a husk and I am spacing my units out pretty uh, widespread. So that wherever he puts a creature, it will likely die. Like I said. And next turn, I will get the Witch Doctor out. And this game has just been smooth sailing. He really didn't have a chance to get a footing on the board. Um, I'm not quite so certain that the rest of the matches in the session run will go quite as smoothly as this one. Maybe if I didn't go draft those two Jarl Urhalds and instead had like a Blight Bear or a Rot Eater and like something else and the, the Blight Bear or Rot Eater and like Anima Conduit I think this would be better but it's alright who knows maybe we're just gonna still get five wins with this deck and it won't even matter and he just surrenders so he doesn't see a way out of that um, and there really wasn't so that'll be it for today like the video if you enjoy subscribe for more content like this and I guess I'll see you all next time Thanks for watching, and keep on scrolling, scrollers.